Friends in the Münzberg Saal. Dear friends uh, on the screens, we're running a little late already. Nonetheless, I'm very pleased to be facilitating today's workshop. I'm Oliver Schröder. I'm not in the program because Martin Schrödewan unfortunately uh, fell ill. Perhaps he even caught uh, COVID. So we really hope that he's getting better soon. It's my great pleasure to um, be facilitating this wonderful panel consisting of young and uh, well-versed comrades uh, who I'm sure have a lot to say. Uh, our topic is how the far right is organizing, attacking our rights, dividing our communities. And for that panel, I'd like to welcome, and I'm starting from your right-hand side, Esther Lynch, the Deputy General Secretary of the European Confederation of Trade Unions, ETUC, Ireland. Hi, Esther. Then we have Jana Fracassi, Deputy General Secretary of the Italian CGIL. And next to her, we have from the very, very successful party, uh, Labour Party in Belgium, we have uh, Alice Bernard. And then we have Jan Montpoix, who is a member of our very popular French Communist Party, but first and foremost, he's representing the European Pride uh, and Aviation Network. Our plan is to give you the possibility to make a short input, and then after that I'm looking forward to a very colorful discussion on all the possible questions. Thank you very much, and Esther, you have the floor right away. Thank you, uh, Oli. Uh, when I got the invite to be here today, I, I thought this is a really interesting discussion, and I wasn't disappointed this, this morning uh, with the debate. Uh, I work with the European Trade Union Confederation, and what, what we are is we're the organization of trade unions from all over Europe. So, example, DGB from Germany and CGIL or FGTB uh, from uh, or, or, or through the, all three confederations from France, all part of the ETUC. And we've established a working group specifically to look at how is the far right showing up in workplaces, but also how is the far right showing up in trade unions? Because it's quite clear to us that there is a strategy by the far right to try and take over either works councils or to try and take over uh, trade union branches and workplaces. So it's very important for us to join up all of the different initiatives that are happening in trade unions. Part of the initiatives that are, are underway, and be happy to, to talk about these in, in, in the discussion that will follow, is all about uh, addressing workers' concerns, whether it's a concern, I might lose my job because of new communities arriving, or whether the concern is, I might not be able to get a social service, and at all times to be able to challenge the narrative to say it's not because somebody is here, it's not because there's refugees, it's not because people have come to work, it's because of policy choices which do not uh, properly support working people, uh, either in terms of their wages, their conditions of employment, or the social services that, that are available. And importantly, that challenge shouldn't come from people at the top of the union. That challenge needs to come from your workplace representative because that's the person who you trust most. That's the person who helps you out when you're in trouble. The role of the, the union needs to be to support the workplace representatives to be able to have those discussions safely and to be able to have those discussions with the right techniques and tools and information to fully support them. 
The, of the reason the European trade union uh, movement is very, is very alert to these developments is because the European Parliament used to be 5 to 8 per cent far right. It's now 25 per cent far right. And the, uh, the, the existence of so many far right politicians is just dragging the discussion entirely to the right. So what used to be the centre has now shifted to the right. So uh, countering that, um, having strategies in place which call out the voting uh, practices of the far right to make it very clear to working people throughout the European Union that when it comes to things like minimum wage, when it comes to things like gender pay equality, when it comes to things like non-discrimination, the far right do not vote in favour of working people, they vote against them, and to call that out and to make it very obvious. So they're the uh, different strategies and techniques uh, that we're working on, Ollie, and uh, i give it over to the colleagues and we can have a discussion then. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Ja, Applaus ist auch wichtig. Wir brauchen Feedback. In der Corona-Zeit sind wir das nicht mehr gewohnt gewesen. Aber es hilft auch, auch für die Laune. Äh, vielen Dank für diese erste kurze Einschätzung. Äh, jetzt äh, gebe ich der Kollegin Ellis das Wort. Danke, Oli. Ich werde in Französisch, wenn Sie es erlauben. Bonjour à tout le monde. I will speak French. Good morning to all of you here and also those who are connected uh, over the screen. Now, if you speak about the far right uh, in Europe, you must not forget about Belgium because in the north of uh, Belgium, in uh, Flanders, we have Flams Belang, which is one of the oldest fascist parties, we have to say. Now, when we uh, look ahead two or three years, they could uh, certainly become the strongest party. And then in the south, in uh, Walloon or Wallonia, well, the extreme right uh, parties are not as, as strong. This is the French-speaking part of uh, Belgium, and uh, apparently they uh, can't gain such a strong uh, foothold there. Uh, I think our party can be proud uh, to say that uh, we have uh, a very special experience. We have Flams Belang right across from us in the north, if you like, and nonetheless we managed to mobilize the masses for an emancipatory common project. That means um, that in Flanders that fascist party has existed since the end of the Second World War, and they've already collaborated with the Nazis in World War II, which means the Nazi mindset is still present in, in their heads. They were called Flams Block back in the 70s when they were established. And that's also the time when our predecessor party was founded. We have a big port city, um, Antwerp, and we actually um, roamed uh, the same neighborhoods. Uh, back then, uh, the vote were democratic and we were able uh, to see how voters were rather susceptible to Flam's block. But then, uh, fortunately, there were other forces who managed to counter the Flam's block uh, movement. But Flam's block is supported by the Belgium capitalist or by the Flanders capitalist. So in order to increase their profits, they uh, supported the entire uh, the fascist project of, of the Flemish fascist party and uh, so they are trying to forge strong links to the Belgium economic system uh, at the same time they're trying to develop a Flemish uh, conscience and to push back the uh, working class. The Flemish capitalists also managed to introduce the federal structure in Belgium. We have four different Belgian communities. Originally we were a unified state, but now we have four different regions or 
administrative districts in, in uh, Belgium. And uh, the fact that these different regions also speak different languages is uh, actually the uh, starting point for the Flemish fascists to be recognized as a party because uh, Flanske Bloc immediately was recognized by the media as a fully fledged political party. At the beginning, there was some some sort of um, agreement uh, on this in, in, in Parliament. Uh, there was an agreement to, let's say, uh, be in opposition to the Flanske bloc, but that changed rather quickly. At the beginning of the 1990s, uh, the left-wing forces were rather weak in Belgium. That was uh, the fall of the Iron Curtain and uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union, which, of course, weakened the left-wing party. And back then, in the labor districts, Oh, the worker districts, um, the atmosphere was uh, uh, characterized by frustration and uh, workers were increasingly attracted um, by fascist parties. Flanske Belang, uh, their leader, has been uh, sentenced, uh, but still uh, the party is very active and very present in the region. And they managed to represent themselves as a victim, saying, Look at how they treat us. They're treating us unfairly. We're the ones uh, being the victims here. And then they changed their name, name from Flamske Block to Flamske Blanc, which also helped them to increase their votes, 25 percent, as a matter of fact. And once a party has been uh, sentenced, by a court. That's, of course, one uh, thing. But what is dangerous is that they really managed to mobilize the masses. I think we'll come back to that in a minute. There is another party, LVA, that's the Flemish Alliance, a radical right-wing party. We cannot necessarily call fascists, but this party represents mainly Flemish employers and entrepreneurs and businessmen. And both parties together account for 50 percent of the votes in, in that very region, in uh, Flanders, in uh, Belgium. So uh, irrespective of the difficult uh, context, we as the Worker Party of Belgium, BTB, managed to establish ourselves well in the past three years. We had uh, breakthrough results in, in the elections, both in the regional parliaments and the national parliaments, where we now um, have uh, members. Uh, and then we um, decided on renewing our party at the last party congress. And one part of the decision is really going out there to the neighborhoods, talking to people, really understanding what, uh, what it is they're worried about, what they want to know. And also to try to show them how they can be the masters of their own fate. There are workers who are sometimes reluctant and they don't know whether they should vote for Flams Belang or BTP regarding the current uh, situation. So that's a very down-to-earth campaign that we're carrying out uh, on the ground. In uh, Walloon, we have a much more influence, so that's the French-speaking uh, part, and that's also true for the Social Democrats in Belgium. We're stronger there, and we have the possibility to really, in very concrete terms, support workers. We're the third strongest party there, that means, 
uh, we are the third strongest parties uh, regarding the latest polls. We think that uh, if we want to fight the far right successfully, we need to focus on the class mentality of the working class, really trying to unite them. And only by doing this will we be able to curb the, the advance and, and progress of right-wing parties and really push them again to the fringes of society. Thank you. Yes, thanks. That's a very important contribution indeed. And we, as the German Linke, are observing you very closely and your successes. What we've tried to do in the 90s to be really a caring party that is on the ground uh, with the people. I don't know whether we can really repeat that in Germany, but I think you're doing a great job in that respect in, in Belgium, and that is really um, uh, a reason for your success, I think, and a big factor in, in your progress. Perhaps we can discuss that, discuss that situation uh, later again. But for the time being, now, thank you, Alice, and I'd like to hand over to my dear colleague, Jana. Jana from a country where we also have two right-wing parties leading in the polls. And it's a quite complex situation, Jana, I think, for progressive forces in Italy. But Jana is the expert on that, and I'll pass on over to her. Thank you very much for uh, your introduction and for the simultaneous interpretation. I tried to stick to the timetable you gave me. It's true. There are at least two parties in my country that you would call a far-right party. They, kept, uh, they have captured about 40% uh, of the vote in surveys. Uh, you must know that we will have elections in Italy next year. And I would like to describe a little bit the climate, the fertile ground on which um, these parties grow. And otherwise, you wouldn't understand why it was possible to attack the historic main headquarters of our organization in October 2021. The attackers were, well, let's call it figures that explicitly demonstrated that they were supporters of fascism. I think that it's relatively simple to understand because you see a red thread running through all these contexts, not just in Europe, but also beyond. First, uh, I uh, look at it from the point of view of Italy now, but we can certainly feel, see interconnections later. For 20 years, the neoliberals were in power in Italy, and they uh, carried out lots of cuts in the uh, world of employment, and that led to social divisions. Second, we uh, are a country with uh, one of the highest unemployment rates in Europe. Third, more and more political forces in difficult places, in the suburbs, suburbs but also uh, on the periphery, find it difficult to establish them, plus an economic crisis that Italy has been uh, caught up in for a long time, all this has, and we know this from other countries, and I heard a little bit of the discussion in the morning, all this led to uh, one idea going round. An idea that can be instrumentalized quite easily, mostly by the far right, namely that it is necessary on the one hand to reject the bad situation. Then, of course, uh, there are contribution by political forces and from others, and that uh, it helps to have an enemy. 
And when you look back, you know that uh, first it was migrants, uh, Europe, women. In 2019, you may recall, a family congress was held in Italy. That's an organis uh, organized by an organization that is homophobe and is opposed to abortion. So everyone who is uh, sex sexual orientation that they don't like is their enemy. That's the context I'm speaking about. And you must see that there are limitations to all of that. There are explicit fascist organizations, those, for example, uh, that attacked our headquarters and the political parties uh, uh, on the other side. But the uh, limits, the boundaries between uh, all these organizations are blurred. Um, all parties, all political parties express their solidarity with us from the right fringe to the left fringe, because that was a huge dent in uh, the image of democracy. But in reality, in daily practice, you see a kind of getting used to things. Uh, some of the best known examples in my country, but also elsewhere, is that uh, lots of evil developments uh, emanate from sports clubs. Uh, um, this is no small matter in a country like mine, because football is the place where a lot of social dialogue takes place. So the first issue I believe we need to address uh, and I'm winding up in a moment. The, 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 the first issue we need to address is how to describe in very strong terms uh, what the situation requires now to convince people to join us. And as Es already said, uh, these evil forces infiltrate places uh, of work, infiltrate companies, infiltrate uh, civil society organizations. So, uh, luckily, we are still we still have a presence uh, all over Italy. But we know that we need to increase our activities in the workplace. This, uh, what, whatever was the reason why we were extinct, there were many uh, uh, vaccination opponents, but those uh, uh, destroying our uh, entrance area were fascists. We were not the only ones. They wanted to storm uh, the seat of government. So this is uh, what we need to be prepared for when the elections are drawing closer. We still have a technical government in office uh, comprising nearly all parties, with the exception of the uh, Italian left and Fratelli d'Italia. One of the parties that uh, was high in the surveys, and uh, it always uh, uses arguments by the right wing. And then there's a second phase we should consider, but this is now really my closing uh, uh, statement. Uh, the, we have launched a number of initiatives together with the European Trade Union Confederation because we think it's important to uh, organize something on the European level, upgrading courses, further qualification, uh, discussing things like the identitarian movement, uh, one, uh, the, the first sec section in our statute is that we uh, uh, reject all fascist ideas. We need to also invite young people. Um, the problem for us is that we are confronted with political challenge, challenges uh, that um, are not easy to uh, understand when you are worried about your social conditions. I'm speaking on behalf, I'm speaking from a country where 
uh, democratic participation uh, has more or less vanished. Many people uh, don't even go to the polls. So uh, we find our activities now ahead of the elections very important. And uh, if we want to strengthen the working class uh, movement, movement, if we want to strengthen uh, people's rights in the workplace, we need to stand together as Europeans. Thank you. Thank you, Jana, for that interesting overview. It is really uh, a tragedy that the statement, fascism is not an opinion, it's a crime, uh, seems to be confirmed in uh, more and more par uh, countries. And uh, the attack on your headquarters was a break of a taboo. It was just horrible. It was so horrific. And it is very important to have a good and successful trade union, but uh, you also have to take over the uh, tasks of the political left because it could still grow a bit stronger in Italy. So you do a very important job there. You have a lot of responsibility. Looking at France, a country uh, preparing for the presidential election, uh, the war in Ukraine has changed the focus a little bit, but the, electoral, the election campaign was a kind of cultural clash. Uh, everything was to be tightened up, society was to be um, pulling together, uh, uh, groups on the periphery were pushed further away, and it's rather sad to see that in the 21st century in a country that has not only given us the Marseillaise but also modern on human rights. And I'm now looking forward to Jan's statement on the current situation in uh, France. Bonjour, bonjour à tous. Merci Oli pour l'introduction. Dans ce discours, je vais tenter de vous présenter Good morning, hello. Thank you uh, for translating what I'm saying. I would like to make an analysis and show potentials for improvement to fight against the far right, uh, especially in connection with the LGBT. Uh, QI community. I'm not representative for the LGBTQI community. It's rather my personal opinion that I'd like to communicate. First of all, I'd like to speak about the collapse of our society into different parts. Ideology is something that was invented by the far right to divide society. That means that individuals belong to different communities, they're classified if you like, and uh, each and every one belongs to a different group, to a different part of society, and I, com I am completely against this idea. Of course, there are different parts in society, but we may have to make sure that they are in a position to fight for their rights, and perhaps they're also, let's say, interfaces. And, and I'm seeing rights uh, as some sort of uh, interface. It's important to see that the LGBTQI plus community uh, can also consist of right-wing and left-wing voters. Entire parts of this uh, community, unfortunately, uh, are often in an argument, and uh, there are different uh, parts, such as the trans group, the non binary group, who simply do not recognize the fundamental principles and right of existence of this other group. Uh, and this is something I'm um, utterly rejecting. And yes, there's also right-wing ideologies in the LGBTQI plus community, and it especially the far right that tries to 
Leur but est dorénavant de s'adresser aux Sometimes uh, compare them against the Muslim community which can of course cause problems. They speak about the white French mainly male person that has always lived in Germany and Marie Le Pen is um, finally speaking up, that's what they say. We must not forget that the reprisals that existed in the past continue to exist. They're also trying to juxtapose different values and play them off against each other. Traditional values regarding the Christian conservative society, irrespective of the fact that society has changed and also the other parts of a community have their own rights. When we look at uh, legislation, we, we're systematically seeing uh, draft laws that are trying to prevent uh, homosexual partnerships, uh, adoption or um, artificial uh, fertilization. On the other hand, there are also other topics that are of uh, increasing importance and where we need to constantly inform uh, our members in Parliament so that they understand uh, what the things are that we are concerned with and that they also bear our, let's say, worries and ideas uh, in mind. So there are certain efforts to cover up crimes such as pedophilia or falsification of figures or things that are not true regarding the LGBTQI plus community. So what is being done here is that they are trying to give priority to a certain group of society and they don't shy away from um, instrumentalizing myths that exist. So the far right is based on ultra-conservative values, but they're at the same time deceiving their voters. That means if they manage to assume uh, posts in, in government, to assume power, that will be a mere disaster for, for our society in France. It will be a short-sighted conservative mindset that will be spread and disseminated and that of course will have an impact on the entire society. That means as, it, as soon as they t assume power we would suffer and it would mean higher risks for us. Simply look at uh, Poland and Hungary where we're seeing an increase in repression and oppression of the LGBTQI plus community. Yes, there are different situations in different countries. In France, uh, for instance, we've seen advantages like marriage for all, and we also have the right to donate blood now in France, and we must hold this up just like a screen, a protection screen against the far right, which is still using these stereotypes to... Um, damage us and that of course mates with a certain response in conservative um, voters circles. So what they're trying is they're fanning that fire of fear, fear against LGBTQI, fear against Muslims and the far right is a reactionary power, no, the conservative right is a reactionary power, it's just providing the arguments for the far right. And and there have been uh, certain polls, opinion polls, that show that uh, more and more people are willing to vote for nationalist parties, and that's new. That didn't used to exist before.
You often tend to think that our community is a clear left-wing community. It's not true. We also have right-wing forces amongst the LGBTQI community, and people then start to turn away from us. At the same time, there are certain topics that the classical left-wing forces simply did not deal with. There is, so to speak, a communication problem. Intersectionality, for instance, that, that is the approach that looks at all minorities without making a difference, without making a distinction. But at the same time, of course, as a voter, you think very well about who you want to vote for. And a vote for a conservative party is a missing vote for a different party. That's a certain development that we should tackle, really. And uh, in this context, let me also mention that uh, now in France, um, Shortly before the elections, we have this ultra-conservative candidate who uh, is ranking very highly in the polls, but we're seeing that voters are being manipulated and there's a lot of fake news or misinformation. They're, for instance, communicating that your sexual orientation is a choice, a conscious choice. Uh, that's simply not true. So they are spreading fake news, false news about our community. They're, for instance, saying that we want to influence young people, that we want to go to the schools to influence pupils there, and that they have to protect their pupils against us. So we're being quoted as a force, as a power that wants to destroy traditional values and cultures. They're also saying that uh, we're uh, engaging in incest. There have been uh, demonstrations in France a few years ago, and they were not peaceful at all, uh, especially when you look at the pro-family movements. Well, we've managed to achieve quite a lot in the past, but we have to defend uh, these um, things that, that we achieve, these achievements. Uh, it's really like a witch hunt that is currently happening, and that's something we have to fend ourselves against. Uh, many things are lies, but still we uh, need to make sure that uh, situations don't deteriorate for us. I'd like to also spread a more uh, hopeful uh, message to end with. Uh, nothing can be so bad that it cannot, can't be uh, improved. There are certain initiatives uh, that exist against the far right. These are the ones that we have to strengthen and that we have to make known. For instance, solidarity in uh, in associations and, and clubs. The, to me, that's something extremely important. And it helped me to find out that I'm part of that uh, community. Associations and clubs are very close to people and to people's life. They offer a space for talks, for things that people have in common. And a club or an association can make sure that their uh, a community, the, the people living uh, in a certain area, are better informed and are more tolerant. And also talking to the media is important. Each and every contribution counts. We must not only be strong for our community, we also need to do pedagogical and educational work to make sure that these arguments, which are full of hate and are wrong, uh, are being confined to oblivion. We need to also present counter arguments in the media of communication to be more visible. And at the same time, we need more local initiatives, uh, initiatives that can also be funded uh, publicly to make sure that those people who are really committed have uh, the means at their disposal, also legal 
um, remedies, if you like, to defend themselves. There are associations that provide legal uh, advice. We also need uh, free access to medical examinations, uh, to um, prevention services uh, that are free of charge. And we also must talk in schools and other educational institutions. And we need viable information and information um, that has been confirmed as being true. And uh, lobbying, of course, advocacy is important to change the legislative landscape. Raising awareness and education are the key to include LGBTQI people. We need to raise awareness regarding the problems that they are confronted with and suffering from. But we also need to inform schools and other educational institutions. Wherever it is necessary, we must do that. When we look at schools, we have SOS homophobia. It's an association that fights against discrimination of our community in schools. You can contact them anonymously, and that's a structure that I'd like to see strengthened. It's very important, I think, and I hope that we can continue uh, discussing along these lines. Uh, I'm stating very clearly that I'm against fascism, against the extreme right, and we want to fight for our rights. Thank you. I wish you a fantastic day. Thank you to the European left. Thank you to Transform Europe. I'm very proud and honored that I was able to speak to you today. Thank you very well for this very differentiated uh, contribution. Uh, it is especially the last piece that I like, because we do need things that encourage us. But we need courage and hard work that will give us the possibility to make things better. I have many questions to my guests, but I would also like you, the audience, to raise questions to make this a bit more interactive. And I'd also like the people on the screen to ask questions. But lean back and, in the meantime, time, I can start to the Vice President of the uh, ETUC, ESTA. Uh, dear ESTA, may I ask you this? Uh, when you look at the situation in Germany, um, uh, the, the uh, work at building sites, for example, is very hier uh, hierarchical. Uh, the architect is a German, an expert, a building expert comes from uh, Poland, uh, and then uh, the, the contributors are from somewhere else. And then the extreme uh, right, uh, the AFD in this country, um, uh, provides arguments against uh, Polish and uh, Bulgarian uh, workers, although there's a shortage of construction workers here, but still the uh, Poles and the, the Bulgarians in a building, uh, on a building side are under attack. What does a trade union do in that situation? Uh, what do you do in order to strengthen the rights of those who come here as members of the European community? So the European Union has a single market. And part of the single market is the ability for workers to move or indeed the ability for companies to provide services across borders. And I think the first important message for trade unions to be very clear with working people is that the rules currently are not fair for working people because they don't protect working people properly. What's essential is that every worker, no matter who they are, no matter what work they do, that they have the right to join the union and that they have a right to be covered by the collective agreement the same as everybody else. And I think the European Union hasn't, hasn't understood yet the absolute importance of getting that piece right for the for the for workers and their unions to continue to support the idea of the European Union. Now, I get up every day because I believe in the European Union. 
but I'm not naive about the problems as currently associated with it. And I think it's grappling with that question of not saying, well, it can't ever work, or that the European Union is just a neoliberal project. It's not just a neoliberal project. We can make it something else, and we can make it into something that will genuinely work for working people by having a fair set of rules. And part of that work that we're currently doing is trying to make sure that there's adequate minimum wages throughout the European Union, looking very strongly to uh, the, the, the rate of the minimum wage here in Germany and the, and the increase. Uh, but also, and most importantly, to make sure that workers can join a union without fear and that the union has the right to be heard and to, and, uh, and to bargain for fair wages. And I think that you can't have a single market and, have work and expect workers to support it if in their lived experience they're being disadvantaged within that single market. So it's absolutely essential that we get the set of rules uh, better than we have them at the moment. Does that answer the question? Yeah, it is, it is. But the question came to yes, in the head, because I saw a man in the U-Bahn who was in the Kreuzberg viaduct in Kreuzberg. And this man was a worker from Bulgaria. And he said, well, the money doesn't work for me to buy a house. But he worked 40 hours in the week. And then I asked him, what's wrong? But I don't want to talk so much. I see just what's going wrong here. But it's not me who should speak here. There's probably someone from the audience who could his or her hand up. Not me who should speak here. There's probably someone from the audience who put his or her hand up. Yep, there's someone here. Perhaps it would be good to briefly say who you are, and then you start with your question. Okay. Uh, oui, je m'appelle Cécile Dumas, et je suis du Parti communiste français. Uh, moi, je crois dans. Ce... Il manquait une I am a member of the uh, Communist Party of France. L'organisation est Well, we. Il manquait peut-être un. Uh, the organization is perfect, there's one, but there's one panelist missing, a representative of a charity organization or a charitable organization, because the humanitarians, uh, the humanitarian issues that exist are fertile ground for the far right. And we know that all communities have members that uh, clearly vote for right-wing parties. CGT in France uh, knows about that. There are activities. There are activities underway uh, there that uh, can be, must be seen as worrying. Education is key here. We know what difficult situations are. So we have now uh, a representative of the TUC here. We have union ex representatives in all our countries. But education is really key. And my question is, how, what can we do through education to build people's hope so that we can refute the arguments put forward by the uh, right-wingers one by one? And it refers to women, people with disabilities, minorities of all kinds. They are all disadvantaged, and we need to act more resolutely in their interests if we want to prevent the kind of thing that's happening on the Polish-Ukrainian border where refugees are rejected because of the color of their skin and others are taken in. Of course, it's difficult in times of war, but we must act very resolutely. We must try to do all we can in order to uh, fight racism and not to allow competition between those who seek our help. Thank you for your question. I think that's a very topical one. So if you... Uh, allow me asking Alice, I would ask her to answer the question. She is very much in favor of education. She is very active uh, against the Flams be, uh, Belang. Uh, perhaps you could share your thoughts with the audience. Uh, yes, of course. De, de, de la question de, de Cécile, uh, well, I'm really pleased to have Cécile's question here and have a chance to answer it. We need to talk, no question about it. We need to talk with the people 
Um, and we need exemple, to know their personal uh, situation and talk about things from their uh, personal perspective. People who are in need, people who don't earn enough money to live a decent life, people who have a precarious uh, uh, life, they are angry, they are frustrated. What do they see? A politician um, earning lots of money. I don't know about uh, your country, but a deputy, an elected deputy in Belgium earns six thousand euros net without taxes. And then there are all sorts of extras and surcharges and uh, free public transport tickets, free telephone and all sorts of other fringes, fringe benefits. So spontaneously, of course, you can understand that people living in dire need uh, are outraged. They compare the life of deputies uh, with their own lives. And we tell them, yes, you are right, they earn a lot. These elected deputies earn a lot. And, uh, but then we are doing the same as Flamske Belang does. They keep saying these uh, politicians uh, earn too much. We must make sure that we, the, fl the, the, the Flemish, regain our uh, dignity. So the frustration, the anger is the same, but Flamske Belang argues differently. They say we have to uh, cut their salaries and not take the money away from them. Uh, and we also have to take the money from foreign workers because we, the Flemish, need it for, to make uh, our region strong. They argue um, in a way so that the uh, weak people uh, uh, turn against the even weaker ones. We tell the people we talk to, well, politicians are paid a lot, but they get the money in order to be able to do their work. The the president and the uh, chairman of Flamske uh, Belang are friends. And they're also friends with a rich industrialist. And you can tell people that people who are friends with rich person, and they uh, influence politicians to um, pursue policies that make the poor even poorer, and uh, it helps people to understand who the actual enemy is and where the struggle has to begin. We also have our own elected deputies. Uh, uh, Two-thirds of the income of us as uh, de de deputies go to the party. So we have a, the normal income of a worker. The rest of the money goes to uh, the party. We do this deliberately. We want to demonstrate that we are no liars, that we don't uh, use double standards. We uh, give our uh, income, two-thirds of it, back to the party. But the others, uh, the other elected deputies, don't care about uh, the personal tragedies of their voters. We want to demonstrate that we understand what people complain about. When prices rise sharply, sharply within a week, we are just as much affected as our vo voters are. Uh, this helps us to uh, be better placed when we suggest uh, educational programs, for example. Il parle pas aux autres députés. Well, he both spoke in Parliament. Qui vont le JT le soir, but he does not address the other deputies. But he addresses potential voters ça, ça following the debate on TV. De, de and that's exactly uh, how he speaks. So he doesn't speak uh, on, on uh, the elite political jargon. He uh, exemple, speaks le, the le language of his voters. Our messages are simple. The increase of the price uh, on oil and fuel contributes to making the um, mineral oil companies even richer. They collect enormous profits uh, and con they continue to pollute the world. The problem is these uh, huge corporations, not the Bulgarian uh, construction worker.
So uh, this requires strong trade unions that support minimum standards and a living minimum wage. In a country with lots of migrant workers, we must make sure that they uh, benefit from the same standards. You can't jeopardize the unity of the working class. We do not want to have any wage dumping, no competition. Thank you, Alice. I believe that your persistent edi uh, attitude, your, your position gives you credibility, which is something that we uh, uh, pay our respect to. By the way, in German, deputies of the German Bundestag earn 10,000 euros uh, per month. Uh, only in Italy, they earn more. Well, uh, there is a question from the participants on the internet and one question here from the audience, so I read them out. Or rather, I read the one from the internet. It's directed to Jana and Esther. What role does deindustrialization of entire regions in the EU play uh, in the rise of the right wing parties? And would you please also ask your question now? I have a question to Gianna as well. She spoke about Italy and call to mind the horrible events uh, of October. We really have organizations in uh, Italy that uh, must be placed on the far-right fringe. The Constitution explicitly forbids fascism. There are a number of organizations uh, that uh, have not yet responded to that uh, uh, attack. What shall we do in order to uh, hold back fascism? And what about these extreme situations uh, in the world of employment where the right wings recruit their forces? The CG uh, organized a strike in Italy. The alternative left is not in parliament in Italy. Oh, by the way, I forgot to introduce text Rita Scabinelli of the uh, Rifarazione Comunista Italian Party. And of course, uh, the uh, elections next year were mentioned. I do hope that the alternative left manages to uh, win seats in Parliament because I think it's incredibly important. The CGIEL held a very important organization, uh, sort of demonstration in December to protest against the policy of the government that completely ignores uh, solving the social issues. Employees are close to desperate in view of the policy held under the title no money, nothing we can do, no other option. Uh, so working uh, workers' rights are undermined. I ask uh, Jada, therefore, how her uh, trade union wants to proceed. All right. So I would suggest that, that Anna starts and that uh, Jana starts and then Esther. Sono domande molto complesse, soprattutto. Oh, the questions are rather complex that you raise here. So, first issue. Uh, in fact, I forgot to mention something. The organization, but I think you know that from Italy, that, that organizations that, uh, such as Forza Allora and others, um, should actually not exist because the Constitution clearly says no fascist attitudes. They shouldn't be in existence at all. They should be dismantled. They should be dissolved. It's not only that these organizations are still active, even after the events of October. We have contacted the government. We asked the ministry to intervene, to take action, but no response at all. There's something else I should stress. 
Our organization cooperated with the partisans' organizations in 2018 before the election. Um, asking not to uh, put candidates of these organizations on the voting ballots. So all candidates of organizations and parties um, cl uh, clearly defined as fascist uh, should not be on any electoral list. They were not excluded and could actually be that whenever they run again for parliament, they take seats in parliament. Because, as I stressed, uh, the uh, limitations no longer really exist. What can you do? It's a difficult kind of work. Many organizations, not that GGL, the national organization uh, of the partisans groups is also very active. So the other political parties should actually become much more active. It's not just an issue that concerns us simply because we were attacked. Democracy is under attack. Why am I saying that? In Italy and other uh, European countries, these organizations uh, uh, were often very small in the beginning. Uh, it looked kind of nostalgic that they were still around. So they were simply underestimated in the process. History seems to repeat itself in many countries, which is why I would like to come up with the idea we uh, shared earlier, a worldwide anti-fascist alliance, something uh, that is that exists all over the world, that helps each other to fight fascism. Deindustrialization de has actually uh, promoted the rise of these uh, fa neo-fascist parties. Um, Naturally, it's true to say that in some regions their rise is particularly strong. Uh, in some areas in Italy, we haven't had any uh, active program to create jobs, to bring back industries, or to uh, strengthen the existing ones. But uh, it's also an argument that we can use when suggesting many other measures. Italy has been a country for much too long that desperately wanted to defend consensus at all cost. But uh, we should really remember that we need the strength to organize which puts us in difficulties when dealing with the institutions. Today, when we want to uh, reach consensus, um, Berlusconi used to promise, promise that he will create one million jobs, or Italy first, that was the Lega's uh, motto. So, and these are slowings that do not address the complex problems that exist. And uh, it goes without saying then that uh, you cannot really um, solve these issues politically because you are prevented from suggesting any programs. We have no agenda to do anything for the working people. An agenda that supports those in my country who work but are poor regardless. An agenda that does not help the young people who don't find a permanent job, who are simply exploited being uh, interns or temps forever, uh, who do not know what an employment contract is. So we need an agenda uh, spelling out concrete measures, taking people on board, persuading that it can be done. The pandemic showed us uh, that the agendas were rather simple uh, rights, Social welfare, education, strong health care, uh, rights of the employees, and 
redistribution. We organized that strike in December, as you just heard. It's not only that employees do not get anything to help them through the crisis. Employees are old age pensioners and others who need support. Whatever we did on the fiscal level was regressive. It had nothing to do with redistribution. And uh, that made the people even poorer. So redistribution and the role of the state need to be uh, implemented, because if we want to uh, bring about an energy turnaround, we will be in an energy crisis in Europe very shortly. We need a different approach. So economic incentives must be radically different from what we have now. And the state has a special role to play here. So that's really the last point I wanted to address here because I was asked to do so. Um, just that you know what we talk about, particularly when we mention migration here. There are still uh, people drowning in the Mediterranean Sea. There will uh, still be people who don't reach Europe but die on the way here. So the parties and their debates are so important. And the right-wing parties are those who exploit that exploit the drama of the uh, war in Ukraine now, and they say there are good refugees and evil refugees. The evil ones are the ones coming from the south, and the good ones are the ones from the east. The evil ones are the ones from uh, uh, the south. And that's now my very last uh, comment. My organization is clearly opposed to sending weapons to Ukraine. Together with other pacifist organizations, um, we were in good company, but we now are under attack again. But this division in the public discourse just mirrors the political situation in uh, Italy. The left has the responsibility to close that ditch, and this is one of the many issues. Sorry for being so long. Thanks, Jana. I know it was long, but I think each and every word was important. Esther, would you like to speak about deindustrialization? Yes, of course. And then after that, there is one person from the audience with a question. Yes, Esther, please. Sure. So I completely agree with everything you said, and I only need to add, I think, two things. Um, the first is, uh, it's a really insightful question because it goes to the heart of the, the fertilized territory in which the far right are showing up and, oper and, and beginning to recruit. And I think they're able to do so because all too often in, a, in an indu a change of industry situation, you'll have a whole community where everybody, their lives in some shape, manner or form are intimately linked with the success of that industry, um, whether it's because they work in it or because they work providing services to the people who work in it. And all too often, the approach has been after the industry is gone, to set up some kind of a task force. And the only solution that task force ever seems to have, no matter where you go, is training. And people know that training takes a number of years. It will mean that they will have to move. And this is the second point I want to make. It also is highly likely that the job they will get, the new jobs being created, do not have the same terms and conditions of employment as the industry that's gone. And I think that's the, one of the critical questions that trade unions are currently grappling with. How do we make sure that people don't have to wait until they're unemployed and on their knees before there's any sort of a solution for them and their communities and their families? 
And also, how do we make sure that the, the, the jobs in the new industries are as good as the jobs in the industries that are closing? Because if we can't answer those two things, then people are going to go to people who have slogans like Make America Great Again or the Italian slogans. And I think that's the, the, that trade unions are developing those policies, but what we need is our, our, what we need is close alliances with political parties who will get into power and then help us to deliver those solutions together. Um, I think that that is critically important because trade unions can't do it all on their own. We need support. Um, we need a, 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 an, an, an adequate in industrial policy, both for uh, particular regions, but also for the for the whole of, of the European Union. And critical to that has to be a credible just transition. We can't just talk about a just, a just transition. We have to set out very clearly what the components are and make sure that uh, workers see a path for them and their families and communities which result in a good outcome, not which result in a, in a much worse outcome than they currently have in their lives. Vielen Dank. Jetzt versuchen wir die Internetfrage. Thank you very much indeed. Now we'll try to answer the internet question. <laughs> I'll have a look at the monitor. Yes, I've turned on my microphone now. Can you all hear me? But there is a very strong echo, the interpreter has to say. And uh, she is very sorry, but it's uh, almost impossible to understand the question. So I'm sorry, it cannot be translated at this moment. I'll try again, says the speaker. Okay, this person seems to be in Colombia, <laughs> apparently, perhaps because of the elections, but uh, the interpreters are really sorry. It's really impossible to translate that question. Perhaps the facilitator can later on repeat it for us so that we can translate. We can just hear buzzwords such as climate change and environmental protection and living conditions for human beings to have a humane society. And uh, the facilitator is un interrupting and uh, apologizing, saying that we have a technical problem. We don't know exactly where it is with you or with us, but let's just, I'm sorry that that didn't work out. Perhaps you can just write your question in the chat. Okay, the gentleman in the front, please. Uh, that is the last question, and we need a microphone, otherwise we won't be able to translate. Thank you very much. Knut seems to be the name. Yes, hi, I'm Knut from Jena, where the AFD, the right-wing party, is very strong. And I, I just dropped by by a coincidence, really, and there's one aspect that I wanted to add. There are many studies that prove that right-wing populist parties are not being elected for economic reasons, but rather for cultural reasons. And this separation, I think, doesn't really exist. However, it, it shows one thing. Uh, I was with the um, subsidiaries of the Charité uh, Medical Hospital, the service providers, and I supported them in their strike. And at the beginning, it was only men and German, Germans striking. And there are reasons why foreigners and women were not striking is that they were not as, as were not machos enough to do that. They weren't strong enough to do that. So this is really 
right-wing, white, racist uh, arguments. And they started each and every strike with a prayer. And that, of course, is a problem also if the flyers are not in English and Arabic, uh, and not each and every one is Christian, but we also have Muslims working in these service um, companies, service provider uh, companies. So what I want to say with that is um, that we need to really counter these prejudices everywhere at, at all levels, because it's exactly these prejudices that make sure that people actively uh, vote for, for, for that. They might as well vote for left-wing parties to be better. Thank you very much, uh, Knut. I hope that doesn't uh, happen uh, in Germany, that they have to pray before they go on strike or have a, a trade union meeting. Uh, I hope that's not the case. Um, but perhaps we can give Jan the floor for a concluding remark, because uh, we're coming to an end. And perhaps Jan can let us know how important the sex aspect of cultural identity is, and not the economic aspect. Thanks. Uh, I'll reply in French. And I like to come back to the first question that Cecile raised, education, also people's education. Education is extremely important. A family is what it is. What it is. You can't change its beliefs and cultures overnight. You have your own culture that characterizes you and uh, has an influence on you, but you have to provide information uh, already at school level so that pupils and young people start to understand certain connections and that they also know what's illegal and unlawful, like making homophobic expressions, anti-Semitic statements and behavior so that they can form their own opinion and maybe be able to create their own line of arguments that they can present to their parents. These young people have to raise questions, they have to question themselves. What, am I allowed to say what uh, can I not say? I think that's also creating a political awareness. I'm not seeing a clear link between economic problems and cultural phenomena, at least not a direct connection. Now, in the framework of our electoral campaign, we spoke with so many different people, and depending on the district or neighborhood you're in, you see human misery in all its different nuances. And you can't just say they're poor because that's their culture. It's because they don't have access to vital resources they have a right to. And then also on migration. I'm a French person, but I live in Switzerland, so I'm an expert. And for Switzerland, I'm a migrant. That's, however, uh, quite an interesting experience for me. Now, since I'm white, uh, of course, I don't have any major problems. And I have my job, and uh, I'm leading a pretty pleasant life. But uh, this is, of course, not something that other people enjoy. So you must try to be in those people's shoes to understand that they are denied access to vital rights and, and resources. So we need to also ask them questions and uh, the other way around, because this is exactly what creates these, let's say, segregated communities and also the com competition that exists between these uh, minor groups. So that was just a minor part of the problem that I tried to answer. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jan. Dear panelists, that was a great panel indeed. Thanks for joining us.
Thank you to the interpreters and to the audience here and on your screens. Thank you very much for your interest.